All right, good morning, everyone. This is Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College. And for the AWD 1100 C Sharp programming class today, Tuesday, November 22nd, 2022, um, I took a, a lecture that should have taken about an hour and a half and turned it into a three hour lecture. Not on purpose, but because I screwed a bunch of stuff up. But in my effort to remain transparent, I'm going to give and put out both this video and the original one that has a lot of mistakes in it. All right. But I want us to get started to create this Garth Brooks database project. So I've created a, a folder here that's just called Garth and there's nothing in it. So let's, I'm just going to start up right now. So I'm going to start up by taking the project that I have that actually works and I'm just going to close it. So I, all, the only thing that's up right now is this or the they have got open is this Garth folder. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to create a brand new project. Now, this is where we had problems this morning. So please, please, please watch and do it the way I'm going to do it. So click create new project. And as we always do, we choose Windows Forms app .NET framework. All right. And click next. Then I want to make sure that I'm saving it into the folder named Garth. And I am. And I'm going to call this Garth Project. And I'm going to call my solution Garth Solution. You didn't have to do that, but this is just the way I'm doing it. The key thing is notice it says here that I'm using .NET Framework 4.7.2. If you want more on this, you can watch the other lecture, but I'm going to just leave it right there. All right, and I'm going to click Create. Now, I'm going to run through the whole gamut. I'm going to do this whole program right now from scratch, and I'll put this one out there, and I will put a note there that says you probably want to watch this one. But again, in an effort to remain totally transparent, I'll put the other one out there as well. All right. So we've now got that. We've got a form here, okay? And this is going to be our splash screen. So I'm going to right mouse click and I'm going to rename the form FRM splash screen. And it comes back up. It says, you want to do all the internal things? Of course I do, so yes. I'm also going to come in and very quickly, uh, I'm, I'm going to right click on my project. I'm going to choose add. And I'm going to add another form. This is going to be my main form. So I'm going to choose form here. And I'm going to call this FRM main form. All right. So I now have two forms, FRM main form and FRM splash screen. That's fine. But I want to do one more thing. And it's very, very, very important that you watch this and do it the way that I'm doing it. It'll work. It'll be the easiest. That is... I want to now click on my solution, not my project, but my solution. Right mouse click, choose add, and choose new project. Now I want to come in here and in my search box, I want to type in class library. And there's a bunch of them that come up. All right. I want the one that's down here, the one, two, three, four, fifth one down that says classlibrary.net framework. Click on that one and click next. And you want to make sure that number is just like the other number was, which is 4.7.2. All right, and it is. So I'm going to call this, let's just call it Garth Library. All right. In fact, we may be able to use this someplace else. I'm going to call it Music Library. All right, so Music Library. And I'm going to click Create. So in just a moment here, I now have in here a music library. And I've got a Garth project with two for forms in it. All right. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to, in my music library, it gives me this garbage class that's called Class 1. I really don't need that, so I'm going to get rid of it. So now there's just the library, some properties, and some references. I'm going to click on the music library. I'm going to right mouse click and choose Add and go down to Class. 
And the first class that we create will be called album, singular, A, capital A, lowercase l, B, U, M, album dot C, S. That'll be our first class. I'm going to make this public. And it's going to have about six things in it. First, it'll have a public ID, int for ID. In fact, let's do it like that. ID gets set. And then it'll have a public string for an album name with a get set. Let's move this over so you can see everything I'm doing. All right. Next, we're going to have a public string album artist. And that's going to have a get set. Next, we're going to have an album year. That'll be an int. And that'll have a get set. <clears throat> Next, we're going to have an album URL. And that'll have a get set. <clears throat> and then finally, one more. We'll have a public string album DESC, and that'll have a get set. All right, so that's everything. That's that's our entire class. I don't need that. Why it's giving me that, but it is. There we go. So this is the album class. It has six members. An integer, which represents the ID. This is going to basically later, this will correspond to what we have in the database. You have an album name, an album artist, an album year, an album URL, and an album description. That's everything we need for this class. So I'm going to do a file save. Do a save all, and I'm going to close this. Now, before we go on, I'm going to create one more class. So in here, I now have album.cs. I'm going to right mouse click on this again, and I'm going to choose add, and I'm going to choose class again. And I'm going to call this second class albums with a plural DAO, A L B U M S D A O. The DAO stands for Data Act, Act or Database Act Active Object. All right. I think it's access object. And it's going to be our bridge between our C sharp code and the actual database. For now, it's only going to have one line in it. So let me change this to public. And we will come in and change this or add to this. And I'm going to say here public, I'm going to make it public. List, it'll be a list of albums. And we'll call it albums. And it'll be equal to a new list of albums. That's it. This is very similar to this, the song manager class that we had earlier that I showed you. All right. So that's everything that we need. So again, I'm going to do a file, save all, and I'm going to close this. All right. So now it's time to come in here and start building my forms out. All right. Okay, <clears throat> so we've got two forms. We've got our splash screen, and we've got our main form. Let's do the splash screen first, all right? And there's a few things I'd like to put in here. All right, so first of all, I want to, the name is okay. It's been set to splash screen, but a couple things. I'm going to click on here. I'm going to change the color as I always do and let's choose let's choose this let's just uh, how about turquoise there we go we'll choose that and I'm also going to change and put some text in here all right and I'm just going to put in here Garth Brooks DB project for database project slash or dash splash screen there it is right there and hopefully you can see that garth brooks db project splash screen okay 
And while I'm at it, I'm just going to grab the other one and do the same thing here. This is the other form. So we'll set that text to Garth Brooks DB Project dash main screen. I'll make that two words. And there it is. And I'm going to change the color of that to turquoise as well. All right, so those those things are done. I'm just trying to get the junk, so to speak, out of the way right away. Let's go back to the splash screen. All right. And what we're going to do in here is we're going to basically build it out. Well, the first thing is I want it to be a lot bigger than it is. So I'm going to click right here, and I'm going to I'm going to make sure that I set my window state, not my window state, I'm sorry, my start position, to center screen. So when it runs, this should run in the middle of the screen. So it should be in here someplace. It'll run. Just give it a second. And there it is. Good. Garth Brooks DB Projects splash screen. Perfect. All right. Now, I want to change the size of this. Right now, it's 816 by 489, and I want to make it 1559-1559, comma, 848. Hit Enter. So you can see how much bigger it's gotten. All right? There it is. Okay? And that's fine. I want it to be like this. All right? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a label up here. So let me move this over a little bit so I can at least see where it says label. And there it is. And I'll bring this in. And the only thing I'm going to set for it right now are two things. I'm going to set the name to LBL title. All right. And I'm going to set the auto size to false. All right. Then let's start changing some stuff. Okay, the location, where it is on the screen, I'm going to change the location to 48, 25. All right, didn't move it much, but that's okay. The size, I'm going to make a lot bigger. All right, the size will be a lot bigger. And don't worry, we'll, you know, so I'm going to make this 1454 wide by 84 high so there it is all right and let's see anything else i want to do let's do the text align on there and we'll make it in the center all right right there so there it is and let's change the font size etc in there let's make it a big about 48 bold Arial. That's, that's getting to where I want it, but I don't want it to say label one. All right. I'm going to have this say Garth, Garth Brooks SQL Server DB for Database Application. There it is. If you want, you can darken the background on this, or you can do whatever you want to do. Change the text color to white, whatever you think is best. I'm going to leave it just like that. All right. Now, one of the things that I sent out to you this morning was, in fact, let me open up what I sent out to you this morning. One thing was a folder of images. And as we peruse our way through them, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Now, when I go backwards, you might notice there's all, except for the last one, they'll all be the same size. So, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, or whatever. All right, so they're all the same size except for this one because those are all representing album covers. All right, right there. So they're all, I think it's 300. Yeah, it's 300 by 300. And this one here is 400 by 600. All right, did I have to tell you that? Of course not, but I wanted you to see it. So I'm going to go back here. All right, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find a picture box control. And I'm going to drag it out here. Okay, there it is. And I'm going to just change the color of the background, make it a shade darker than it is. 
so it sticks out. So there that is. All right, and I'm going to call this thing PB for picture box, PB00. All right, and I'm going to locate it on the screen. So my location on the screen will be 38, 156, and you can see where it just moved it over a little. And the size is going to be, and I just got this by playing around with it. All right, so the size is 248 by 641. All right, so that is where I'm going to put that big picture that you saw a little bit earlier. All right, so now I want to come in here and I want to add another picture box. We're actually going to have 15 of these, but I want to give, give it the right size, etc., to try to make it a little bit easier for me and hopefully for you as well. All right, so there's the first one. So this will be PB01. All right. And PB01 will be at location 345, comma, 156. And all of these are going to be the same size, all 15 of these. So the size on them will be 159 comma 153 so they're all going to be that size so I'm going to grab that one and I'm going to copy it and paste it in four times there's one there's two there's three and there's four all right now I was much more intricate in the way I did this with the students this morning, I'm more concerned now with getting the thing done and looking decent, etc. So there will be some pictures. Then Control A. Oops, not Control A. Control C to copy. Control V to paste. Okay, so that will be the second set. And then finally, I'm going to make a third set of buttons. All right. And then the last thing that I want to do in here is I want to add two. And I said buttons. Those are picture boxes, of course. But the last thing I want to do is I want to actually add two buttons. So I'll put one of them. I don't know in here maybe and another one we'll put next to it okay so now I'm gonna play with this and I want I want to spend about five or ten minutes to get this thing looking the way I want it to look all right so taking it from the top there is picture box zero one so this will be picture box or PB zero two and as I move it over this will be PB03. And again, as I keep moving it over, this will be PB04. So I'm looking right here. So we got what? There's 01, 02, 03, 04. Good. All right, we've got one more here. Let me got to move this over a little bit more. And that's this one. And that will be PB05. All right. Now I'm going to start working my way down. So here, this will be PB10. This will be PB9. 09. PB08. PB07. and PB06 all right and going down this will be PB11 this will be PB12 this will be PB13 
This will be PB14. And finally, PB15. All right, those are all done. Now let's quickly do our buttons here. We're going to have two buttons. This first one is going to be BTN main page. It will have the text main page. All right. It will, let's change these, the font size in here. as we oft times do. We'll make this 20, bold, and Arial. I fix that. So, and I want the size of the button here. I can highlight them both. I want the size of each button to be 178.64. There you go. And I want this first one to be positioned at 690.733 for its location. And I want this second one will be my exit button. So it'll be called BTN exit. The text it will have on it will be exit. I should have the size already correct. 178.64 and it'll be located at 983-733. There's that. All right, so I'm going to lock my interface into place now. All right, and I'm going to run the program. It's not going to do a flaming thing, but I want to see how it looks. All right, that looks fine to me. All right, again, this make maybe should be pushed over. I don't know. It's okay. All right, so we've got all that stuff done. So when we click here, we're going to want to go to our main page, of course. And when we click here, we'll want to go to our exit. So let's write the exit one first. So exit program or not. And as I always do, I'm going to go and grab that code that I gave you earlier on in the semester. There it is. All right, so I should be able to do a file, save all here, and at least that exit button should be operational. And it is. So that part's done. All right. And actually, the other button is not difficult at all, this main page. And we'll call here, call this go to main page. I would call whatever we want, of course. So I'm going to have here a private void go to main page. All right. And it's three lines of code. And it'll be, um, let's see, we'll call it main form. No, sorry form main form equals new frm main form this dot hide and main form not show dialog that's it now i should now be able to go and switch to my second page let's see if indeed we can And I can. Okay, that's good. All right. So now what's left to do in here is I want to be able to put in my code to make this actually come in here and do something. All right. <clears throat> Not a lot of code either, to be honest with you. But the first thing I want to do is stop my run. I want to come in here into my project, which is right there, Garth Project. And I want to right mouse click and I want to add a new folder that I'm going to call, excuse me, call images. All right. So there's my images folder. 
Now I'm going to right mouse click on that images folder, click add existing item. And this, these are the images I sent you this morning. So there they are. And it looks empty until I come down here and I click because I don't want to show C sharp files. I want to show image files. There they are. Whoops, I don't want to do that. Try that again. Try it all over again. It doesn't like when you do a control A on that. So uh, add existing item back at images. All right, I'm going to highlight all of them and I'm going to click add and it put all 16 of them into my images folder right there. All right, now I'm going to close that. Now I'm going to grab just the first one. It doesn't matter which one we grab. But I'm going to grab that first one and I'm going to click copy full path just like that. All right. Now in my splash screen here up at the top, I'm going to create two things that are going to be global. First, I'm going to have a global constant. I don't even know if I use this, but I'm going to keep it in there anyway. Const int, and I'm going to call it num elements, and I'm going to set it equal to 16 because that's how many images I have. Then I'm going to create a global array. All right, and I'm going to say string bracket bracket images equal. All right, and I'll need a semicolon at the end there. But now I want to put this in. Inside of double quotes, my first image. There it is. Now recently, it appears, Microsoft changed this to put in the backslash, backslash, both of them. All right, so I'm going to grab this. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to paste it in. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 times. All right. And I don't know why it's giving me an error there, but hopefully we'll be able to fix that shortly. Oh, these should all be commas. That's why. Because it's inside of an array. So we'll just work our way down here, make these commas. No comma after the last one. And that should fix all my errors. And nothing in the last one. There. All right. So there is my images array. And that's good. So I've got that done. Let me move this over one. There we go. So we've got all that. All right. So what's left? Well, we've already got our buttons operational. We already put in our go to our main page to go to the main page. We saw that worked. We've already put in our exit button and we saw that worked. So what I want to do is I want to add some code here. So when the form loads, it's going to put all those images in these things here. So let's double click on the form itself. And there's the load event. And now I can say PB00 picture box 00 dot image equals image dot from file images zero. What did I do? It's easier to run this and show you. I should have my first image in here now. There it is. All right. So let me put in the rest of the images. The easiest way is to take this and copy it. All right. And this now will become one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten, oops, ten, eleven, twelve, oops, not 121, twelve, thirteen, oops, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. And this will be image fifteen, fourteen. 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 
seven, oops, that should be nine, eight, seven, not 007, it's not James Bond, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. All right, now this is the time for the big reveal to see if this worked. So file, save all. And whoa, well, that doesn't look right, so we'll have to fix that. It's not a problem. It's actually bringing in the same image. That's the one from here. I can tell by looking at that. So I screwed up. That's fine. We'll fix it. All right. Okay, my guess is that I did not change that in here. So I've got to change these. See how they're all zero, zero? So that should be zero, one, zero, two, zero, three, zero, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, and 15. Hopefully that's now correct. Stop the run and let's save it and run it again. And there's my album covers. Okay, so my home page is just about done. What I mentioned today, because I want you to get used to this, even though we've never looked at it before, is I'm going to very quickly create a menu for this program. All right? And I'm just going to create it for the first page, not for the second. So let me exit, and then let me put this in here. All right, the way I do this is I come over to here, and in my toolbox I find a thing called a menu strip. There it is, and I just drag it up here and let go. Let go. There we go. And we'll have here main page. And we'll have, let's put a help in here. So here we'll have help. And for the last one, we'll put in exit. All right. So we now got a menu in here. Doesn't do a flaming thing, but we're going to make it do something right now. All right. So if I double click on the main page, gives me a really bad name, which is main page tool strip menu item. And I don't like that. So I shouldn't have double clicked on it, but it's okay. All right, I'm going to go back to here and I'm going to click on that single click on it. And I'm going to click the lightning bolt and I want to where it's got that. Where is that code? It's right here. I want to remove this in this click event. I don't want there to be any code in there. And I think it has been removed. Okay, so I'm going to go back into here then. All right, and for the main page, I want to change the name of this. Let me move this up so you can hopefully see it. All right. I don't like main page tool strip menu item. So I'm just going to call this main page menu item. All right, the second one I'll call help menu item. And for the last one for exit, I'll call it exit menu item. All right, so just double click where it says main page. There it is. Now it still has this, the tool strip in there I want to remove that so let's see if we can get rid of that I don't know why that's still in there I thought I got rid of it evidently I did not so let's close this bring this back up all right on this main page click the lightning bolt and I want to remove this that should have done it
All right. Now it's main page menu item. That's what I wanted. And I just want to call go to main page. So hopefully you see why I've had you write things um, in a modularized way. So we can call the same routine from two different places in the program. I'm calling it both from a menu item and from a button. All right. Let's go back. And for this help, I'm going to let you write this. So I'll just put a message box here, box.show, and said provided by students. And it'll say, you do this. And we will just make a message box buttons.ok and a message box information. That should work. So let's just double check that. In fact, let's check them both and see if we go from one to the other what happens. So let's see here. If I click on main page in the menu, I go to that page. That's good. And if I click on help on the menu here, it says provided by students. You do this. Good. All right, so let's do our last one here, which is the exit. And you know that we call exit program or not. All right, so let's see if that one now works. Yeah, it does. All right. I at least believe, I believe that we're done with the splash screen. Okay, I think that one's done. I can close this and I can close everything that we got for the splash screen. And now we can start worrying about the other form. So for now, at least, I'm going to take this, I'm going to close this, and I'm going to close this. All right, now we're going to start working on this one. All right. And as we work on this one, it's going to be a lot simpler interface. I'll tell you that much. They don't, there's not much in here. But we've got our FRM main form. That's fine. We're going to add two buttons in here. And I want to show you something that I may or may not have shown you before, but I think it's kind of neat. And I'm going to go back to my splash screen. And I'm going to grab those two buttons. So I'm going to highlight them both, do a Control-C to copy. And go back to here and do a control V to paste. Now they're locked in place because they were locked in the other form, but I'm going to unlock them now. And we'll move them, I'm sure, a little bit more in just a bit. Okay. So these two things that are in here right now, this first one, I don't want it to be BTN main page. I want this one to be BTN. We're going to call it load data. And when you click it, it is going to load some data for us. All right. And this next one is going to be called BTN splash screen because that's going to send us back to our splash screen. And it'll have the text on it, splash screen. And we're going to write all this in just a moment. All right. The only other thing that we want to add in here, and we're going to want to make this form as big as the other one, just so that they're, they look kind of symmetrical, I guess, if you want to call it that. So I'm going to, for now, I'll just pull it down here. And I'm going to go in, and in my toolbox here, I'm going to find a data grid view, which is right there. I'm going to pull it in and click on it and drag it down. Okay. All right, so let's pretty this up, and then we will be able to put in our code. All right. So for the form itself, it's FRM main form. It's got an accept. The accept button we'll put in there as load data. The cancel button we'll put in there as, as uh, splash screen. 
All right, and we will set the size to the same size that the other form was, and that size is 1559. Oops, just missed that. So 1559 by 848. All right, and it did make it bigger. You can't probably tell, but it did. You'll have to take my word for it. It should now be the same size as the other one. The start position will again be center screen. And let's put some text on here. I guess we already did. Garth Brooks, DB Project Main Screen. So we got that. Good. All right, now let's do our button objects as far as where they're positioned, etc. So this first one here will be at location... 7072. All right. And the size should be 17864. It already is. The text is load data. This next one here. All right. The location should be 7193. So there's that one. A little bit of space between them. The size is already set to 17864, and the text is already set to splash screen. And as far as our data grid view here, the location, and it was doing this this morning too, a little earlier. I want this to, let's see. All right, so the location will be 27172, 271,72. Moved it down a little bit, which is fine. And the size will be 1193 by 445. And most of this was just done by eyeballing. All right, nothing special that was done to make this work. All right, now the first thing I'd like to do is let's add, well, I'll put in here for load data. All right, and I will put in here for splash screen, but let's add the splash screen because again, it's not much. It should be form, FRM, splash screen. I don't know what, let's just call it splash screen. Equals new FRM splash screen. And then this dot hide. And finally, splash screen dot show dialog. Now I should be able to bop back and forth between these two. So let's look and see if indeed we can. So there is my main form. Main page, splash screen, main page. This looks a little funky here, so I'm going to have to fix that. All right, it will fix it in just a minute. Splash screen. All right, good. So I want to go back and I want to look at this because I think this is too big. So the size of the data grid view should be 1193 by 645. And that's what it says it is. This looks too big. Maybe the form was the wrong size. The form should be 1559 by 848. Well, that's correct, but this is wrong. So let's go back to this. We'll put it about like there. I don't know. That's fine. Let's lock this into place. All right, now let's look and see what it looks like when we run it. There's there, 
main page, splash screen, and in fact, this is the way I did it earlier, but let's let's make it a little nicer. So I'm going to grab these two things, and I'm going to unlock the controls. Well, I was going to move them down here, but that's fine. I'll just leave them where they are. That's okay. All right. So we've already got our code in here for our splash screen, and it is going, and it's working. It's going back and forth. So the only code that we've got left, and there's not a lot of it, don't let it throw you because a lot of it I gave you already. All right, we're going to come in here to load data. First thing we're going to do is before we even do that, let's go up and up in here, we're going to say binding source and we'll call it album binding source equals new binding source. And then finally, albums DAO okay and don't worry if we get an error don't worry we're gonna fix it right away so albums DAO albums DAO equal new albums DAO all right now I'm getting two errors why because right now our program does not know about the music library. So let's tell it. All right. I'm going to take my mouse and I'm going to right mouse click on the name of the project. And I'm going to go to add and to reference. Then notice there's music library and it's got a checkbox. I'm going to check it and click OK. All right. Now I'm going to get rid of these things in gray because I shouldn't need them. But I'm going to now come in here and say using, and lo and behold, there's the music library. And our errors are both gone now. All right. So what's left? Well, in here, we've got to actually load our data. Okay. There's actually three lines of code we want to put in here. We want to call load music data which hasn't been written yet so it's going to give us an error all right then after we're done we want to connect the list of albums to the data grid view control all right and that will be album finding source dot data source equals albums dao dot albums all right let me move these over i won't probably need this very much anymore so all right so there's the first line then the second line is our data grid so dg did i rename the data grid let's look so that was renamed BTN Load Data. That was renamed BTN Splash Screen. That is still called Data Grid View 1. So I'm going to change this to DGV for Data Grid View. And it's holding songs. I mean, I can call it whatever I want, but it's holding really albums. So DGV, Data Grid View Albums. All right. So. <clears throat> go back to my code here and again I gotta let's put in this load music data so private void load music data all right so that error is gone now this will now be DGV data grid view albums dot data source equals album binding data source okay I don't know why it doesn't like that album binding oh it's just album binding source there we go come on go away 
album binding source, album binding source. Hmm. Well, let's look at these two lines. Album binding source dot data source equals albums, DAO dot albums. That looks right. DGV albums dot data source equals album binding source. No parents. There we go. All right. We're getting there. So the next thing we want to do is actually load this data. Now, I gave you a file this morning, and unfortunately, the file has junk in it. So let's look at the file right now. And what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to search for pairs of double quotes. The only place for the album description there should be a double quote is at the beginning and at the end of the line. So I'm going to look in here for double quotes. Okay. That one's okay. So record one was fine, or album one was fine. Album two looks fine. Album three looks fine, excuse me. Album four looks fine. Album five looks fine. Album six looks fine. Album seven looks fine. Album 8 looks fine. Nope, it's not. See that? So there's double quotes within our double quotes. So that's got to be cleaned up. Looks like that did it. So let's go to number 9 here. So number nine looks okay. Let's get to number ten here. That looks okay. Number eleven. Eleven looks like it's okay. Twelve is okay. No, it's not. Number thirteen.
is okay. So I think 13 was okay. Fourteen looks like it's okay. Fifteen has to be fixed here. Hopefully that's, hopefully at least, everything that's in there is fixed. All right. And then we're going to add them to our ADO list, or DAO list, I should say. All right, so that's everything. Bring that into here. That becomes this whole routine. So I've given you the whole routine. Now, I did screw up. And I'm going to fix it right now. All right. And the way I screwed up was each one of these things that are in here. I think that should go over one. There we go. Um, these should all have a semicolon at the end. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. That should be moved over. That should be moved over. There. Now it's giving me a thing here. So this album does not contain a definition, and that's because when I did this, I changed it to an I with a lowercase d. And this is case sensitive. So you'll notice all of these will go away as soon as I do that. don't believe there's any errors in here. Let me see if I can bring this error area up. Well, let me do a file save all and run it. Nope, says there are, are errors. So let's see where those are. Thought it said there were errors, so let's look. No. There we go. Okay. Well, when you look, I missed some of these. I missed some of the double quotes. Okay. It looks like that's the only one that I missed. So again, file, save all. Run it. 
and there's our home page there's our main page we click load and there's our data all right so to very quickly summarize this we came in and we did the following so let me close that we came in here and we did the following all right let me Okay, um, taking it from the top, we came in here and we created our project and then we created two forms. First one we called FRM Splash and it was our splash screen. All right, move this down quite a bit here. So again, this was our splash screen. All right. And then the other one was our main form, which looks like this, much simpler form. Okay. And in the splash screen, we added right there, we added a label. We added two buttons down at the bottom, and we added 16 picture boxes all right then we also came in here and added a menu so we've got main page and help and exit and when we look at the code for this page all right again we don't need any of this we don't need any of this which is pretty up a little so we created our global constant which was our array that held 16 elements and we created the actual array itself, and we brought in all 16 of those images from our images folder. All right. Then when we click the button that says main page, we call go to main page. And that creates or instantiates a new main page for main form, hides the current form, and then shows the newly instantiated main form our exit is just that it's our exit program or not loading the splash screen and i want you to try to see if you can do this yourselves rather than do it as 16 lines of code like i've got it see if you can make a an array of picture boxes see if you can just write two or three lines of code to fill it all up all right then this was our main page this was the menu item for the main page again go to main page and this was the help one and there was the exit one so the other thing i forgot to mention to you is i would like you to come in here yourselves add another menu strip here all right and this should say splash screen all right and the other one can say Oh, it wouldn't be the splash screen. It would be main. Uh, yeah. So this one will say splash screen. Well, I already screwed it up. Isn't that nice? Let me get rid of that. All right. So where this says splash screen, click that again. Get rid of that code that's in there. All right. This one, I wanted to actually say splash screen here. All right. And this one shouldn't have said that. This one should actually say, and I got to come in here, to, I think, to change the actual code that's in there. So the text says splash screen, and I want that to say load data. All right. And then that one, so this is, let's change the names too. This should be load data menu item. And this one should be splash screen menu item. I guess that should be a little L to be make it hang with conventions. 
All right, so you can write these yourselves, and what is that going to do? It's going to call load data, right? All right, so load music data. And the other one, all right, what did we put in here? We called it, oh, we did it here, so let's, Let's call this uh, private void go to splash screen. And we're going to move that code out of there and into here. And we'll put that code in here. And now we can call from in here go to splash screen. All right. So we should have a working menu in both of them. So main page, boom, it jumps to the main page. Splash screen jumps back. Help, well, you got to provide that. Exit, let's not exit yet. But let's go back to the main page, and now we can lo load our data in here as well. Oh, didn't like that. That one's working, but this one's not. So we're going to fix that one. Not a problem. All right, we'll fix that, and we'll just about be finished here. So the load data menu item should be calling load music data. All right, which is, and I know what the problem is already. All right, these two lines, okay, should be inside of load music data. Right down at the bottom. And it had, they have to be at the bottom. They have to be in there because we're calling this from two different places. Well, let's try it again. Let's make sure I didn't break anything, which is always a very important thing to do. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 12, 13, 14, 15. That one should be going over to here. And I don't know what happened there, but something did. That should be like this. These should all be moved over. Like that. There we go. So let's do a file. Let's just run it. So file. It is running, so let's stop the run and start the run again. All right, main page, load data. All right, splash screen, main page, load data, and there it is. Everything is now working. So I created this actually today multiple number of times. All right. You will have to go in and take from what I sent you, which was all this stuff. You're going to have to make sure that for the album description, the only place you should have a double quote is at the beginning of the description and at the end of the description. If there are any other double quotes in there for song titles or whatever, get rid of them. And also make sure that you set this up so that both of these are using 4.7.2. That's all I've got. For Monday, please make sure you've got the SQL Management Studio, download it on your machine. I will talk to you later. Have a nice holiday.